Hi guys, welcome back. The last time I showed you how to do this textured side and um, how you paint it and everything and like I don't know if you can really see how it's raised up in some areas and some it's not. That's a really nice um, texture for an outside of a building that if you want to achieve it, watch that video. Alright, so next I'm going to show you how to do the interior. What I did is I traced a line leaving on each side so that when I put my building on, or my front on the building, that I'm not gluing it to the paper. All right, then I went ahead and I cut my paper to fit within those lines, just like that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue on here. You can use some Mod Podge, or you can use a watered down mixture or some tacky glue, um, as long as it's thick paper. If it's not thick paper, then you're going to have to use the Mod Podge completely and do it that way because otherwise it's not going to stick. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to use some watered down glue mixture that I have. And basically this is just like a Mod Podge, but it's a little bit th um, thicker. And then, but you can make it as thick or as thin as you want. The most important thing is to get your edges covered because that's where you're going to have the issue of it peeling back if it peels. All right, go ahead and finish spreading that out. All right, so once you have that on there, go ahead and take and remove any excess glue that may have leaked out around any areas you don't want it. Then you want to take your paper, make sure that you have it lined up with the bottom evenly. Okay, because mine is a glitter paint, or not paint, but a glitter texture, I'm using my Mod Podge roller because I don't want it to end up scraping off. If it was regular paper, I would tell you to go like this and press it down. So now that that's on there, as long as you've got it nice and tight, you can um, put something heavy on it and let it dry. Okay, once you have it the way you want it, then you can take a sharp um, blade and go around it and cut out the bulk of it to get it out of your way. Right. that's just going to kind of free up some space all right so to help hold it down I went ahead and cut the door out and I'm just going to place this on here for now this is not the way this is going to go it flips the other way but it's just going to kind of help hold that in place a little bit to keep that edge on there to press it Okay, so once it's all done, just give it one more final coat going, you know, over it like that to make sure it's nice and pressed down before it's 100% dry, emphasizing on the edges. All right, once you've done that, then what you want to do is cut out the rest of your um, areas 
and make sure if you're using a knife you're using something with the point on the edge like this where it goes on an angle versus straight so it makes it a little bit easier an exacto knife would be um, probably the ideal thing because you can get a better handle on it so probably a little bit safer than using a regular knife but whatever you have that works for you and you're used to then use that don't worry about it being perfect because you can always go back later once it's 100% dry and then square up the edges all right but you want to make sure it's dry completely first before you do that all right now for the next step we're going to go ahead and glue the door on here and you can use some wood glue for this or you can use some tacky glue whatever you like um that will help you and what you like to do i'm going to go ahead and actually use some tacky glue for this one and when i do it i'm just going to do a little bit of glue and i'm going to um weigh it down and i'm going to put it right in this little crease here and my glue doesn't want to come out obviously i have to i've got way too much glue on there i have to take some of that out with my finger Make sure you get some on this little lip here too. All right, now once you have that, oh, look what I did, I made a mess. I have to get a wet rag for that. Okay, so I went ahead and took the wet rag off of there and did that. Now, my door is raised up a little bit higher than the back of my wall. So you have two options. You can leave it away from here a little bit, or you can push it flush and then have it overlap in the back. I'd rather it overlap in the back where I'm not going to see. So I want to go ahead and push that in there nice and snug. Flip it over and then press this down to make sure it's staying there. And the whole entire time, I want to make sure that this is even at the bottom because I don't want to have it wonky. So if it's not even, you just adjust it where it needs to be. All right. And then you can put your trim on there if you like as well at this time. Okay. So when you're doing the trim, you need to make sure you do it, line it up first before you go ahead and actually put it on. Because if you don't, this might be too long or it might be wonky or whatever. All right. Um, and you can use some masking tape if you like or something to hold it together. Or you can just kind of hold it and glue it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and use some masking tape to kind of hold my corners together momentarily. So, to help hold them together until I get it glued and to keep this on here, it doesn't matter about the masking tape, is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to take a small piece and I'm just going to add it to the corner here. And then I'm going to add another small piece to the corner here. That's going to help assist me in keeping it together. Once I have it all together the way I want it, I'm going to take my hot glue gun. And you can use crazy glue or whatever. I'm just choosing to use hot glue because honestly, it's just going to be easier and quicker with this process for the back.
maybe it'd be quicker if my glue gun would act right. While the hot glue is still lightly warm, I'm going to pick out what's there that squeezed out because I went a little overboard with that glue because it wasn't coming out right. So now that's nice and snug on both sides. So now you have a working door. Okay. Now as far as the window goes, um, <laughs> actually I should have done this first. I had it and then I forgot about it. Um, put this underneath of here, but now that I didn't do that, I'm going to have to actually build a frame around this, which is not something I was intending to do. So. If you get to this part, make sure you take your window and put it underneath the paper first. I just totally messed that up. So now I will be building a frame around that, even though I wasn't intending to. All right, so now that I gotta do that, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down just a tiny bit, because since I gotta put a frame, I need it to be a little thinner. Okay, so now I've got my window cut out um, for the smaller size. I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue right along the top edge, a little bit along this edge, and a tiny bit there. Press it down in there. Pull off that excess. Okay, so now these are some paint stirring sticks I'm going to go ahead and use as the frame. All right, so I'm going to cut them to fit, measure them, and mark them. And I'm going to cut to that length. And I'm just going to make this a box window. I'm not going to miter the corners. All right. Now I'm just going to put a tiny bit of glue. And you can actually use some crazy glue for this part if you don't want to use hot glue. Right now I need to measure the top 
and go across. Now I'm going to cut this straight and this straight. All right, now I'm going to go across here. And because I didn't paint these and I'm not going to spray paint them now, um, I'm just going to paint them with regular gold paint. Maybe I might even take a little bit of the uh, paint out of the spray can and spray it in a cup and then do it. All right, so that's how the inside of the window will look. Mm, this is still not dry. And then that will be how the outside of the window will look. I'm not sure if you can see that little ticket window there. Actually, the bottom of the frame is off on there, but that's okay. That'll glue when we glue it. Okay, one more thing you can do to dress it up is you can get these little things in the scrapbook section. They were like a um, bronzy looking color and I spray painted them the same color as the door. I'm going to actually take them and glue them to the corners of the window. You can leave the window like you have it, but I don't know. For some reason I was just looking at it thinking it would look good. So I tried it and liked it. So I'm going to do that. I just think it gives it a little bit more character. Okay, so the front's done. Now I took four beads and I put them on here. And um, I took some toothpicks that look like this with the little ridges in it. A silver Sharpie. And then when it dries, we'll have handles for the exterior. And you can do the same thing for the interior. And just glue it on there. I use some Loctite super glue to glue that. When they're dry, I'll glue that there. All right, so they're glued there. It's for the outside. Obviously, you got to pull off all the frays and stuff. All right. And then you have that there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get the other part, and we'll get started on that. Okay guys, so for the surface of the floor, I'm going to go ahead and be using the um, regular floor tile that you get at the store for an ordinary house. And if you look at it, it's got quite an interesting pattern. It looks like stone and it's even raised in some areas and some it's not. So pick the area that you want and then that's what you want to go ahead and use for your exterior ground. Okay, so once you've decided which one you want to go ahead and use, you want to hold it down very, very tight and go one score down. Hopefully that didn't just move like I think it might have. And then lightly bend it like that. We'll see how even it did it when I get it over here. You always have to cut on the front side to get it to snap correctly. Okay. Now, to get this to go, let me make some room here on this messy desk to where I want it. I'm going to go ahead and kind of put this like this. Hopefully you can see this. Just not quite on there. Okay. 
Okay, and then you remember the little rolling tool you have. Just take that and just roll it. And that's just going to kind of press it down in there. All right, straight edges on the front. You can go back and you can put some more along the front if you want and cut it again and do the same thing. But if you're going to do that, do the front first and then do that. That way it overlaps it. And then you just take some brown paint and kind of paint it on there. That's what I would do. I would not worry about going and try and cut a little piece for that. But that's that. Okay, so now what you need to do is you need to put some glue right along the edge of here and then glue that to that. Now mind you, this may come off um, a little bit if you take and go all the way back and you don't leave that spot. So I would probably use some crazy glue on this part or some Loctite glue. Okay, so now you just want to put some glue right along this edge here. And over here just kind of blot it down in there so it's not really leaking on the edges okay and then you want to put some all along here okay now I also put a dab of crazy glue, like, I don't know, top, bottom, and two in the middle as well. And then I'm going to press this here, just like that. And then I'm going to tape it with some masking tape to hold it in place. Actually, I don't want to tape it with masking tape. Okay, so I got it flipped over. I'm holding that flat down. 